this video we'll be looking at how to set up an internal flow simulation. Internal analysis and flow simulation is a great way to analyze closed systems or sections of a system such as this piping. It just requires us to cap off any openings of the model by creating lids and then flow simulation will extract a watertight fluid body and only perform the simulation within this body, speeding up performance substantially. The steps we'll take a look at in this video include the lid creation, creating a project with the project wizard, establishing boundary conditions such as flow rate and pressure openings, setting goals to track key parameters in our simulation, how to interpret the results, and also cloning the project to take a look at some different boundary conditions. There's also timestamps in the video description if you'd like to jump ahead to any of these steps. What I have on the screen is a system of pipes created with SOLIDWORKS routing. All I've done so far is creating a configuration that has unnecessary details suppressed. Next, I want to make sure that the add-in is loaded, which can be done under the Command Manager tab for SOLIDWORKS add-ins or the Tools add-ins menu. To create an internal flow simulation, I'll want to cap off any openings in the model. And there's a tool just for this to create lids within this flow simulation add-in. All I need to do is select the faces on the end, and flow simulation will create lids for me. So then when I click the check mark, create some additional components to cap off that opening. I'd recommend fixing or mating these components so they don't move around on you. You can also model your own lids if desired. Now that the openings are capped off, we're ready to run the flow simulation wizard. We'll name our project. I'm going to call this two outlets. Choose our unit system. Choose if we need to include any effects such as heat conduction or gravity. In this case, I'll include gravity and put that into the Y direction, because that's how my model's oriented. And then click Next. We need to choose our default fluid, which in this case is going to be water. Click Next again, until we get all the way through to finish. Now our flow simulation project is created, and the next thing I want to do is create some boundary conditions, which will represent how the fluid enters or exits the model. So for my first boundary condition, I want to get the water into here. And it's important that I select the inside face of the lid to do this. So I'm using the Select Other tool. And I'll set my inlet velocity at 3 meters per second. While I'm in this screen, I can name this. So I'll call this a 5-inch inlet. And I'll also define some goals. Set a goal for volume flow rate and static pressure at this inlet. Click the check mark. And we'll need to specify some conditions for our outlets. So I'm going to insert one over here. Select other and choose that inside face. And this will be a pressure opening. I'll call this a four inch outlet and set some goals on it also. This will automatically track these parameters during the solution. I'll click the pin icon so I can create another one with these same settings. And this other one is going to be a 5 inch outlet. And I just need to choose its face using the select other command. And I'll X out of here. And we can see I've got these boundary conditions and outlets, inlets and outlets defined, as well as a whole bunch of goals. When I click Run and initiate the calculation, the flow simulation window pops up, and it will allow me to automatically plot these goals. I can click the Goals Plot button and see how these goals stabilize over time. So the flow simulation won't stop until all these values have converged. And it also saves me from trying to extract those numbers later. Now I can move on to interpreting the results. To do this, 
I like to change the transparency so we can see inside these pipes. Now we can create whatever plot types we want. You might have seen flow trajectories, which we can insert onto the inlet here. I'll do 50 pipes and color code them based on velocity. You can see how the vast majority of the flow is going right out the 5 inch outlet. These can also be animated. We can insert a surface plot, and let's take a look at the pressure on all the interior faces of the piping. I'll hide those flow trajectories for now, and we can see the pressure distribution here. We can easily adjust the scale of the legend, reset it to its automatic maximum, or change the parameter we're looking at. Of course, we can access those goals at any point by listing off a goal plot. Finally, if we want to test the variation, we can simply clone this project. I'll clone it and call it one outlet. And notice we can also clone to different configurations if you need to test a geometry variant. But for this new project, I'm going to suppress the 5 inch outlet and rerun it. You can see now we have a reduced number of goals. And once all our goals have converged, we'll be able to access these same plots that we defined once again. So we can see our new flow trajectories under these new conditions. By the way, we can clean up the model display a little bit by hiding the computational domain and optionally hiding the global coordinate system if you don't need it. Hopefully you found this video helpful and let us know in the comments section what type of content you'd like to see next.